In the year 2018, Jeff Bezos' net worth went from $78 billion to $150 billion. To put this in perspective, in one month, that means he earned $6 billion. And in one minute, that means he earned $150,000. Now, if the average American only makes $50,000 USD a year, in one minute, Jeff Bezos is three times as worth the average American in productivity. That means if you accidentally bumped into Jeff Bezos and caused him to fall ever so slightly, those 10 minutes of wasted time, he would pretty much be in his right to try to sue you for, I don't know, like $1.5 million? Because I'm sorry, but time is money, baby, and you can't just go around bumping into people with your clumsy self. Now, Jeff Bezos is so rich. How rich is he? He is so rich that he got divorced from his wife. His wife got a settlement of, I don't know, $35 billion, and she instantly became the third richest woman, wait for it, in the world. Now, I'm throwing out all these big numbers, but when it comes down to it, I got just one question for you guys, the flight crew. Should billionaires exist? And by the end of this video, I think we're gonna get a little bit closer to a similar answer. Hi, my name is Fly Stewart. You are watching the Uneducated Investor Podcast, baby, where we connect investing to pop culture. Feel free to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, flight crew, let's get better at investing together, baby. So I got really four very simple reasons why, yes, why, yes, billionaires should not exist. They, they just should not. It doesn't actually make any sense. And me as someone who just loves finance, who loves investing, when I really started looking and understanding the numbers, it started to really, really not make sense how these people actually have that amount of money. So the first thing that you really need to understand when thinking about should a billionaire exist is you need perspective. How much actually is a billion dollars? And there's a couple of numbers that can really help get us to really quantify how much a billion dollars really is. So to help put this thing in perspective, the average person makes $2.7 million in a lifetime. If we go back to our trusty, how Jeff Bezos has taken a little poopy dookie on our chest chart, we can see here that Jeff Bezos in one hour makes $8 million, which is around triple the amount that the average person makes in a lifetime. So again, I'll put it back into perspective. Jeff Bezos is more productive in one hour of his life than the average person is in our whole entire lives. And I think it's because when it comes to these numbers getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's really hard for us to quantify how big these numbers really are. So I got another cool little graphic for you guys, and it's the difference between 1 million and 1 billion. If you were to sit and count to a million for every second that passed by, it would take you around 11.5 days straight of counting to get to a million seconds. However, if you were to count to a billion for every second that went by, well, um, it would take you around 31.5 years. A billion is a ridiculously huge number. And I think when it comes to really understanding if billionaires should exist, we need to understand first what it means to have a billion dollars. Number two reason why a billionaires should probably not exist is because of the problem with capitalism. And I know we live in a capitalist society and a lot of people are saying he makes that much money because that is what his job deserves. And why there is very little countless amount of people who can do what he does, you know, being the CEO of Amazon obviously is a ridiculously hard job. Is it worth a billion dollars, $150, and should CEOs really get paid that much amount of money? 
Well, we're gonna stay on and use our test case of Amazon, you know, keep it simple. But to understand if Jeff Bezos should be worth $100 billion, we need to really just think about it and what it means for a job to actually be worth that much amount of money. And you see, yes, capitalism does pay in the free market for demand and supply, but there's countless times in capitalism where the free market actually starts to deteriorate and we need to come up with a more socialist or a more social answer to really identify and fix those market failures. Case in point, how much should the CEO of the electric utility company be worth in the country? You know, every house nowadays definitely needs electricity in America. So what could he essentially turn that amount that he charges or they charge for electricity to your house? Would you pay a thousand dollar utility bill? Would you pay a $10,000 utility bill every month? What is that threshold that you would charge? My intuition tells me it's a lot. For roads in the street, should one company be able to own all the roads and basically charge whatever they want to for you to drive on the road? Should there be one telecommunication company? Because of course, telecommunications to build those big cell phone towers, it costs a lot of money. Like realistically, you can't have a bunch of competitors doing it. It really costs a lot of money to do this. Should one telecommunication company be able to charge what Ever they want to for the cell phone lines in your house, for the internet cables in your house, for the cell phone towers in the air, what would you realistically be willing to charge if they were to cut off all those services to you? My intuition is a lot. And a free capitalist market society says that competitors will come in and charge at a lower price and that way these companies won't be able to raise their prices forever. However, in real life, there's these things called natural monopolies where the cost to enter the market is so ridiculously high that nobody, I mean no other company can really compete with them because they don't have just a billion dollars out of the gate to front that capital intensive cost. And if they did have a billion dollars, why would they? The risk of losing your money is just too damn high. That's why it is natural for us in an economy to come up and combat these natural monopolies with regulators, regulations, having a regulated price that you can actually charge for your electricity, making roads a public good that anyone can go down without someone just tolling the hell out of you for driving down a road and making it so that the, these companies can't just charge you a million dollars for your internet phone bill and your TV package. These things have been declared public goods and it's in the favor of regulators and of people like you and me to make sure these people don't get in check. That is why there's no CEOs of these major companies making trillions of dollars because realistically everybody uses roads, everyone uses electricity. So you may be asking, well, you know, there's no people who are making like hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for this electricity thing. So how did Jeff Bezos get to $150 billion net worth? That brings me to reason number three why billionaires should probably not exist. And that has to be political corruption. Yes, in 2018, it's very famous now that we know that Amazon paid around zero dollars in federal taxes. That means that this billion to be trillion dollar company is paying less in federal taxes than you and me. So you start to really wonder to yourself, how does a billion dollar company pay less in taxes than someone who's making a hundred thousand dollars a year? And that is very simple to see how it happens. It all is political corruption. You see, when it comes to elections, it costs a lot, a lot, a lot of money to campaign. People are raising 30 million dollars in a quarter just to go around the country and buy political ads. That's on Facebook and TV, that's to travel around to different areas, that's to build staff to get boots on the ground. It costs a lot of money to run an election. So if you could have literally the greatest campaign, but if you don't have the billionaire backers behind you to really fund your campaign, you're not going to have a prayer 
of a chance to win. Now you may be asking yourself, you know, why are these billionaires giving people like Elizabeth Warren, giving people who are like Pete Buttigieg who has over 20 billionaires backing him, why are they giving these people so much money to run on their campaign? And that's because they aren't just giving them money, it's an investment for them. You see, by making sure that the right laws get passed and the wrong ones that hurt their businesses don't get passed, these companies are literally spending a million dollars campaigning and then saving $10 billion on the back end by not having a law getting passed that would actually hurt their businesses and, businesses and have them paying more of their fair share. Now you may be wondering, well, it's a democracy, so wouldn't us as you know residents, wouldn't we have to vote on this and make sure that the billionaires pay their fair share and these billionaire companies pay their fair share? Well, that's the genius of these campaigns because they know one and one thing only. Everyone is way too busy to really read into these economic plans that they're giving and they know that the average person just will vote for something because it sounds good but when they actually look into it it's not practical and not even possible. One of the biggest current day examples of course has to be Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax. In theory, this sounds amazing, like wealth tax, oh my god, tax someone's wealth? Why hasn't anyone thought about this? This is ingenious. This is going to make sure that the billionaires pay what they deserve. However, in practice, this is actually impossible to implement. We've all been to Zillow if you're trying to buy a house. Zillow is a website that lets you know how much a house is worth. However, if no one's willing to pay you what you think your house is worth, your house actually drops in value. Now, why do I bring this up? That's because the average people like you and me, we have money and our money is basically our net worth, but rich and super rich people, they have what's known as assets and assets are their net worth. And what an asset really worth is very subjective in a sense. For instance, they could spend a million dollars on a painting. Is that painting then worth a million dollars? Well, if someone is willing to pay 10 million, it's worth 10 million. But if someone's only willing to pay one dollar, it's one dollar. So when it comes to the IRS coming through and trying to evaluate how much that painting is actually worth, they can't just charge a flat tax and say you owe me this much because the person can argue that no, the painting actually dropped in value and is only worth one dollar now. And the level of bureaucracy that it would create to have someone actually implement a wealth tax, it would be ridiculously huge. It would take a team of like 10 people to really evaluate how much even someone like Donald Trump is really worth, where all his assets are globally. And this would just, at the end of the day, really start to force billionaires to think about easier ways to hide their money. So Elizabeth Warren knows that a wealth tax is just something that's not practical. That's why many countries have tried it and failed it and actually repealed it back because it doesn't work in practice. And the reason why she's offering this as an economic plan is because she has billionaire backers that want her to win but don't want her to actually tax where the money is that way you can get something like the wealth tax that will pull well that won't actually work in the real world a better tax strategy of course is offered by some a candidate like andrew yang which is called a value added tax which basically every major country in the world has except for the united states essentially what this means is when a business does a business to business transaction that transaction is taxed and it's harder for these companies to really hide those business to business transactions on their balance sheet on their income statements on their cash flow statements these transactions are taxed at multiple times which makes it easier for the government to actually get collect that tax at the end which avoids situations like Amazon basically paying zero dollars in federal taxes because they basically abused and exploited tax loopholes that basically justified them lowering the amount that the government could tax them. And the last reason why there shouldn't be any billionaires in existence is it just doesn't make any sense. Just for like intuitive, you know, a multiple of very intuitive reasons. First, using our test case of Jeff Bezos. 
His net worth is around $150 billion. One of his top executives, Jeff Wilk. He is the CEO of Worldwide Consumer. His net worth is $170 million. Andy Jesse, CEO of Amazon's Web Services, his net worth is $36 million. While of course these amounts of money are nothing to sneeze at, nothing to shake a stick at. I need to learn some more expressions. Like this is getting, it is nothing to sneeze at. Let's go with the first one. Does it really make sense that Jeff Bezos net worth is a thousand times higher than one of his top executives? To put this in perspective, let's say you had a senior manager above you and he was making a hundred thousand dollars. Using Jeff Bezos's comparison to his next top executive, your net worth should be expected in this scenario to be a hundred dollars. You'd be worth a hundred dollars and your boss above you would be worth a hundred thousand dollars. Now, intuitively, this doesn't really make sense when you start to think of it that way. Of course, we're talking about salaries and we're talking about net worths, which are two inherently different things. But this is just something to show basically the way that common sense would make you think that your boss would be worth the same as you if you guys were working essentially at the same company, but they're just like one level up. Again, one of my favorite Reddit posts about this is a rich man gave his wife a million dollars and told her to spend a thousand dollars every day. When nearly three years had passed, she came back for more. Then he gave her a billion dollars and told her to spend a thousand dollars a day once again. Now this time it didn't take three years to pass for the wife to come back more. She came back to ask for more when over 2,700 years had passed. That's how long it took to spend $1,000 a day for her to spend a billion dollars. A billion dollars is a realistically really huge number. People really can't spend in their lifetime. If you have $1 billion and you put it all in the stock market and you're making the average return, which is 7% return a year, you're making $70 million a year from just doing nothing and sitting on a billion dollars. $70 million a year is literally $6 million per month that you are earning for just having a billion dollars. You earn money when you literally just have a billion dollars in your bank. The market starts to break down and not make any more sense when you have a billion dollars. And the whole point of taxes is to make sure that we all contribute and pay our fair share of taxes. But when billionaires are so politically connected that they can get around actually paying their taxes, they start to earn way more than their fair share. And that's why the wealth gap is continuing to grow and grow and grow. And it's crazy how a company like Amazon, who needs our economy's free electricity, who needs the roads that we all pay taxes into, who relies on the internet that we all pay taxes onto, who relies on the production of an actual economy to exist, how this company can allow the CEO to be worth $150 billion and it hasn't even been around for over 30 years yet. It just doesn't make any sense. If that is the case, there should be a hundred billionaires for every industry because of course, what would you pay to have electricity in your house? Probably a lot. Now at the end of this, you know, I don't want it to be all doom and gloom. What can we do as a society to actually make sure that people pay their fair share? Well, we have to start going for politicians who actually are trying to address this and not in a way just to get votes, but in a way where they actually attack the root of the problem. Of course, I mentioned the VAT tax earlier. I've done a bunch of videos on Andrew Yang. I think he's by far the best, the best candidate for putting economic plans toward this. Also, Bernie's good. He, um, you know, I don't agree with all of plans some of them seem very um, extreme and unpractical but of course he has plans there at least in place to stop some of the loopholes that billionaires use to make their money at the end of this day do I really think it's gonna change well mm, money is in politics so entrenched that and the establishment is so on top but I, that I think someone like Elizabeth Warren or Donald Trump or Joe Biden is gonna get back in office and nothing's really gonna change which is why the stock that I own the most of is 
Amazon. Yeah, I don't think it's going to change. I own most of my portfolio in Amazon because they're right now very cheap company and they basically their stock is very cheap, undervalued right now. And I think they're about to take off even farther. And Jeff Bezos is a genius and he's going to explore more of these tax loopholes. So I'm a cynical type of guy. Billionaires shouldn't exist. But if they do, hey, throw all your money into their companies because they know what they're doing to get past the system. But what do you think? Should billionaires exist? Comment below. Let me know. And as always, the best, most brightest investors are the uneducated ones, baby. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, my friends, is because the uneducated investor, they never stop learning. Like and subscribe, and we're trying to put out one to two videos every week. And we, flight crew, we have to take off, baby. See you on the next one.